Please. Why are they voting against being... Think about what they're voting against. They're voting against even bringing the bill up to have a discussion about it, to vote on it. If you're opposed to the bill, vote against the bill at the end. You've got a, more than 170 amendments. You could change it if you don't like it. But the idea that you vote against a rule to even bring it up, that makes sense to me. It's hard to pass everything in this place. Yeah. Speaker McCarthy, who is slow walking government funding bills one by one, has only passed one of 12. I'm a former professor, so I know what one of 12 means. The speaker's getting an F. Oh, that's gonna hurt! When Katie Porter is giving a lesson, you want to be present, but you don't want to be on the opposite end of it. Thankfully for Speaker Kevin McCarthy, there wasn't a whiteboard involved this time. To suspend my thousand dollar debt ceiling and pay off the debt that I've taken. Buy the ticket, take the ride. I did the spending, I've got to pay it back. But it was still pretty scathing in its condemnation of the dire job that he's doing. On this very floor in January, the whole world witnessed a historic contest for House Speaker. I rise today to serve notice. Mr. Speaker, you are out of compliance with the agreement that allowed you to assume this role. And to perfectly articulate just how fragmented they are, Katie Porter put on her professor hat and graded Speaker McCarthy on his performance. And I'll give you a hint what the grade was. Your favorite Midas host name starts with this letter. Nah, that's messed up. Speaker McCarthy, who is slow walking government funding bills one by one, has only passed one of 12. I'm a former professor, so I know what one of 12 means. The speaker's getting an F. And these bills don't even have enough support to pass in the Senate. The speaker is not on pace to significantly improve his grade before the deadline. So what does that mean for the American people? It means that House Republicans are driving us off a cliff to a shutdown and to the corresponding economic harm. That is not the type of action that is gonna bolster our economic growth and fight inflation. Our constituents, Democrats and Republicans alike, are wondering what the plan really is around here. Make no mistake, today's hearing tells us a great deal about the plan. Someone who's driving you off a cliff wants to distract you, and that's what Republicans are trying to do with this hearing. While House Republicans struggle to figure out any kind of real plan to keep the government open and to lower costs for the American people, they come up with hearings like this to attack the progress that was made and is being made. The Inflation Reduction Act is paying down our national debt lowering our energy costs, and making prescription drugs and health care more affordable. It's a testament to what happens when Washington stops delays, gets to work, and makes a genuine effort to address problems that Americans are facing. In other words, it's what Washington looks like when it's doing the opposite of what it's doing right now. As we've heard this week, Republicans are about as unified as Lauren Boebert and her husband, not just on the topic of impeachment, but on basic bills that, while they will never become law, at least go to showcase some slither of identity. So I owe you a pretty remarkable moment on the floor today. Uh, it's a little procedurally dense, but basically there's a thing called the rule, which is something that's passed by the party in control of the House usually by a party line vote, to move to an appropriations. This was the rule for the DOD appropriation. Should be safe sledding. What happened? That's right, Chris. This is a pretty dire situation. We are witnessing a full-scale paralysis among House Republicans where divisions within the party are fully grinding the chamber to a halt. They are not able to pass long-term government funding bills. They're not able to pass a short-term government funding bill, even though it is loaded up with conservative priorities that the hard right wants. And they're not even able to pass this so-called rule to debate a defense funding bill that they support. And the reason is these hard right Republicans want assurances from Speaker McCarthy about how this appropriations process is going to end once it gets to President Biden's desk. Assurances that Speaker McCarthy is simply in no position to make. They control the House. Democrats control the Senate. Democrats control the White House. Now, it gets even worse, Chris, because what Republicans are fighting about is bills that have no chance of becoming law. This is simply a messaging bill. All these bills we're talking about are just messaging bills that, if passed, would represent the House Republicans' opening bid for negotiations. If these hard-right members on the, the Republican conference are unhappy with what's in them now, they're going to 
to be even more unhappy with what's in them by the time they end up making it to President Biden's desk. And that's where Speaker McCarthy's Rubik's Cube is. There is no way, it seems at this moment, for him to bridge that divide. I mean, if you're going to be a party swearing by an authoritarian sycophant with 91 indictments and counting, at least all fall in line behind that idea. And it's not like this Republican feud is some after the kids go to sleep conflict. This is blatant in front of the boomers, where MAGA nuts bending the knee to their cult leader are threatening government shutdown while those strapping on Velcro spines are holding firm that impeachment is not the route. Saying things like this, David Joyce, Congressman, I'm not seeing the facts or evidence. Dusty Johnson. There's a constitutional legal test that you have to meet with evidence, and I haven't seen it. Don Bacon. There should be a direct link to the president and some of the evidence. I think we need to have more concrete evidence to go down that path. And then Ken Buck, the time for impeachment is the time when there's evidence linking President Biden. And I don't think that evidence has been presented. Now, these are not people who are Democrats. They're not members of the lamestream media or whatever you want to call it. Those are Republican Congress people. So the evidence is very strong against Hunter Biden. There is very little evidence that links Hunter Biden with Joe Biden. Uh, Hunter Biden received a lot of money from Burisma, uh, a Ukrainian oil and gas uh, company. And Joe Biden fired a Ukrainian prosecutor named Shokin. Uh, the, uh, the, the theory, I guess, is that the Burisma paid money to Hunter Biden so that Joe Biden would fire Shokin because Shokin was investigating Burisma. One, there is little to no evidence that Shokin was investigating Burisma. Two, Shokin was uh, uh, targeted by the European Union um, as well as our State Department to be fired because he was more corrupt than the people he was investigating. And three, there is very little evidence to no evidence that suggests that Hunter Biden actually shared the money he got with Joe Biden so that Joe Biden would do something or that Joe Biden knew that Hunter Biden was getting money so that uh, Joe Biden would take these acts. Um, that's what has to be investigated, and I'm all for the investigation, uh, not, not an inquiry with a label of impeachment, but we have three committees right now, the Oversight Committee, the Judiciary Committee, and the Ways and Means Committee that are investigating Hunter Biden's activities, and they're doing a great job. They're, they're uncovering a lot of good information. They just haven't found that link yet with Joe Biden. And the result is a good old right on far right tug of war. But here's the thing, it's the American people that are caught in the middle. As Porter and countless Democrats have reiterated, it's a distraction, or at least that's what it's supposed to be. Kevin McCarthy has lost control of the gavel. With this announcement today, he has proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Republican conference is controlled by conspiracy theorists, devoid of reasonable voices, that are coming here to govern and solve problems. Donald Trump is the ultimate puppet master. Marjorie Taylor Greene is calling the shots. They ignore their constituents and they have purged their ranks of anyone who could call themselves a moderate. If there were moderates left, where are they? Why haven't they demanded a vote? Why haven't they come out and called this a distraction, a gross political stunt? Why? Because mega extremists are running the house. But now, not only are the American people able to see the shit show that is the modern GOP politics, while the infighting's going on, Democrats, well, they're continuing to prioritize the American people. This is a clown show, and these clowns, along with Donald Trump, over Donald Trump's four years in the White House, spent more money over four years than any Congress ever spent in the history of this country or any other country. They accumulated eight trillion, these people who are now saying, we're going to go to the barricades and Shut down the government because he won't cut space. These are the people that were part of Donald Trump adding $8.2 trillion to the national debt over four years. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.